Right, so this is another figure that I've been wanting to look at for, well, a fair bit. I got this guy back in 2022, I uh, got the Reaper labels like two or three months ago at this point, and I've just been wanting to talk about him for quite some time, and I'm finally getting around to it. I am, of course, talking about Masterpiece MP54 Reboost. The red recolor of Masterpiece Skids with a different head. Now, Reboost specifically, um, I went with Reboost for a couple of reasons. One, when I was really kind of looking for, like, either I was trying to decide between, like, Masterpiece Skids and Reboost and waiting for cross cuts and all that. And uh, Skids and Reboost went on sale on Hasbro Pulse for a pretty decent discount. So I was like, I'll get Reboost. And yeah, um, honestly, I thought I was going to want Crosscut more, but Crosscut Silver just... I don't know, something about it didn't quite sit right with me, and I've come to really enjoy Reboost's red coloring. Now, as you can see, and as I mentioned, he does have Reaper labels on, but... I mean, even without the Reaper labels, it's a pretty cool figure. With the Reaper labels, though, it really sets everything off. I, I will say up front that is, uh... Like, I don't think the Reaper labels are necessary, but they definitely help. And this is actually two separate sets of Reaper labels, because the window stickers and the actual car and robot mode detail stickers are sold separately. So the windows are a separate set that I bought. Uh, but yeah, I really, really like this mold. It's really good, and I'm glad I, uh, glad I got it. <laughs> Uh, I, I won't be... I know I've been better about going over accessories and stuff like that. I will not be doing all of the accessories in this video, so my apologies to anyone who wants to see the, the little scooter thing. I'm just... I can't be bothered with that. <laughs> so that lives in the box, and I'm not digging the box out of my closet. I do have the weapons, though. And they are tucked inside the trunk. And unfortunately... This is one thing I kind of have an issue with when it comes to this mold. Getting the trunk open is kind of a pain. Um, I'm not entirely sure what a good way to do it is, so I'm just going to try and come in with a budger, maybe? No? Ugh, this is... Yeah, I really don't like this. <laughs> I'm just going to try and pull it apart a bit this up if I can I'll get the doors open which yes you can open the doors to uh, nothing but you can open them um, really there we go okay because the problem is it doesn't open up it slides out so like you can kind of see on this hinge it slides in to close and slides out to open and that's uh, not great. I do not like that very much. I wish it just opened like a regular door. But anyway, I'm going to close this back up, close this back up, and close this back up. And we're just going to leave this open for now. Um, but yeah, the, the weapons tuck in here. I believe this actually does plug in somehow back here, but I typically just toss it in there and close it up like that. I'm just not pushing it in all the way. You can see how it sticks out. But you can store the weapons inside the car mode, which I very much appreciate. This one actually stores perhaps a little too well. Am I going to have to get the spudger again? I think I'm going to have to get the spudger again. Uh, this is off to a great start. There we go. So, weapons, storage, that's a thing. Uh, this one, specifically the way it plugs in, is there's this uh, this little tab inside here that plugs into that little uh, slot that's sticking out on the side there. But we'll take a look at these later when we get to robot mode. But for now, yeah, the car is this 
cute little city connection for anyone who remembers that NES game uh, style hatchback looking thing. And it's I like it because it's very unassuming. It compacts really nicely, and there's a lot of really interesting stuff that happens with this transformation. Now, the uh, stickers are abundant. There's the all of the windows, as you can see. They've got the cell-shaded thing. Those are stickers. The uh, Autobot logo I put there, that is a sticker. The side mirrors have these silver stickers on them. Uh, these little lights on the side are painted. Those are not stickers, but these are stickers. That's The license plate is a sticker. The detailing going along the side is a sticker. The rear taillights, both the side and the back, are stickers. And the rear license plate is also a sticker. So plenty of stickers going around in the vehicle mode. And like I said, this thing is just a fun little hatchback thing. And uh, you can open the hood if you want, though it is a little bit tricky, because the thing is, it's also kind of like the uh, the trunk section where you want to get a nail or something under here and pull up, but that's not going to open it all the way. You want to open it up and then also slide it forward. So you want to pull it up first and then slide it forward, and that will give you what you need to uh, open that hood. And you can see there's a little engine in there, and we'll also be looking at that for transformation. But for now, we're uh, going to leave that as is. And yeah, so there we have the car, and I'm just, I'm just going to leave that because it's such a pain to open. And yeah, I don't know what else to say. I like the colors. It's you know, red with the black trim, and then the lights, and it's, you know, it's not a ton of color breakup without the stickers, but it's meant to be a normal licensed car, so that's understandable. With the stickers, though, I just like what it adds. Uh, anyway, let's move on to size comparisons, because really, it's the transformation and the robot mode that are the main attractions, at least as far as I'm concerned, for this mold. So let's bring in Artfire and Rotor Storm and Samus. And of course, the big reason why, or one of the big reasons why I want to do this video, Burnout. Because now I can actually do a deluxe skids mold versus, or not versus, but compared to a masterpiece skids mold. And the deluxe is smaller, but not that much smaller. They're roughly the same width. Uh, the masterpiece mold is a little bit longer, and it is a little bit taller. But all things considered, they're pretty close in size. Again, masterpiece definitely bigger, but not absurdly bigger, which is kind of interesting to me. And I think it's really just a sign of how well this mold compacts down. I really, really like this mold. <laughs> but let's get all of these out of the way, because there is one more, well, two more comparisons to make. We also have... No, actually, we don't need the... Uh, the weapon chunk that can uh, that can wait, but here we've got masterpiece sideswipe a G2 sideswipe, and yeah, the size difference here is kind of amazing. I mean, yes, this is wider and flatter, so it's more spread out, but like just the size difference between these two vehicles is really interesting, especially considering the robots are basically the same height. But there we have that, and I still, you know, <laughs> lo and behold, I still have my G2 Masterpiece Sideswipe. I still love this thing, and it is, if I do ever get rid of it, it's going to be one of the handful of, like, figures that are going to be the last out the door. I just love this thing. Been thinking of getting Reaper labels for it, actually, as uh, I know originally I said I didn't want to mess up the really beautiful black finish, but... I don't know, I kind of like those 
ridiculous toxic green stickers that uh, that they have for the G2 mold for Masterpiece Sideswipe. But anyway, that's not why you're all here. You're all here for the most important size comparison of all, right? And that is MP54 with the duck tank. All right, transformation time. Now, uh, I definitely want to talk a little bit about the arms when we get to that. But for now, let's just start. We're going to do pretty much what we did before to just open the trunk, which it's ridiculous that you got to do that, but you want to pop the roof up a little bit. It tabs in here on either side. And then you also want to pull this back section out a little bit. Wiggle that back and out because the doors actually tab in along here. You can't just open and close them. So pull that out a bit. Now untab the doors, because the doors tab into these panels on the side. And with those untabbed, you can slide them back and then open them. So untab, slide, back, and open. And now we can bring this down a bit. <clears throat> Pardon me. And we'll do the legs first. So I want to take these pieces and flip them up and flip these up a little bit. I want to bend the legs at this hinge here and they will actually click in here like so. Now you can finish straightening all of this out and these bits will tuck into the back of the legs like so, and just kind of fill in those gaps. Now, and split the legs, and this is really cool. I really like how the feet work. So you want to take this entire assembly here and shift it down and forward like this. Then fold this blue piece around and that tabs in here. Fold this piece back and then fold the wheel 180 degrees around so it sits on the inside and that gives you the foot and just look at how that compacts that is wild love that transformation it's so i don't know <laughs> hard to explain like it's not complicated but it's not necessarily simple it's just a very elegant solution to how to deal with the feet and uh, now i'm going to kind of Pull this section out a little bit because there's this multi hinge system here. So it was kind of sitting up like that. Pull it out like that. It allows us to swing this around. And now for the arms, this is the thing that always confused me about this figure. I had to watch multiple videos a couple of times when trying to transform it because it's just something I could never quite remember. When you transform the arms, you want the arms tucked in so that the elbows are down here. And the wrist section is up here, and there's like this little tab bit right here. You can kind of see on either side, here and here, that sticks down from this bar that goes across the top there. You want the openings of the uh, forearms in the front around where the wrists are to kind of sit on those. That's how you know you have the arms oriented right, when they're kind of parallel like this and tucked around this joint. Because the problem is it's really hard to remember how to do the arms. They're not complicated, they're just very particular. When you do them right, they tuck in really nicely. So yeah, with all of that talked about now, I'm uh, going to hold this back and come in back here and use finger to push the head up. And this can just kind of stay like this for now. You need to get... actually no. Now well, let's pull the head back down, keep that up, because we uh, want some extra room to work with to get these arms taken care of. So bring that back, and these will pull out. They kind of pull and rotate in equal measure. It's really a little bit awkward, but you essentially want to just wrestle them out of their uh, little cavity here. And get that out. Might help to rotate this around just to give a little bit more room. But essentially, get those out. 
rotate this around so that you can get it past this whole section because when this is tucked in like this it's not gonna that's not gonna come out that easily so you want to rotate this up and that allows you to bring it out and bring it out some more now we can uh, I think just for the sake of easiness we're gonna deal with the midsection so gonna well, actually no I think we do want to do the arms this is a mess I'm sorry so pull these flaps back and you'll see on the wheels there are these little tab slot things there and there are tabs on uh, these bits here you want to rotate the wheel around rotate this up and line it up so that that tab goes into that portion of the tire and that will lock the uh, shoulder piece together and it can be a little bit can take a couple of tries to get it right but once it's tapped in you're good you can rotate that around straighten out the arm and pull down the fist and there you've got an arm and same deal here i'm just gonna straighten out the arm first so straighten that out straighten out the fist now pull this back pull this back and line up the tab with slot in the tire and then rotate it and there we've got the arms done now we're going to work on the midsection so these pieces come up and tab into the center here and then these red pieces also come up and they don't fold in all the way what they do is they actually tab in right up here under the armpit and it's a very very clever approach to the uh transformation i think because it uh oh, in addition to the armpit they also tab in kind of right under they tab in here and there so there are a couple of spots where they tab in but yeah this is cool because it locks the arm in place at the shoulder like just below the shoulder so it keeps the uh it keeps this piece from being able to shift back down so when you move the arm up and down it's nice and locked in place and now with that whole thing done and that filling out the torso now we can take the hips and I, they actually slide out a bit so you can see there's slid out there's slid in so slide that out and there we've got the legs all done, the arms are all done, all that's left is the head and the backpack, and we kind of already saw the head, so I uh, want to flip this back, flip the head forward, and then this bit will fold in and fold in. This piece pushes back in, and this folds up. And then this actually exposes a little slot right at that hinge that tabs into this tab just above the waist. So you line that up, push it in, and that actually pretty solidly gets the uh, hood, the car roof, in place. So you don't have to worry too much about that moving around. That's pretty cool. And uh, one more thing we have to do. One more thing. I said I talked about this before and then completely forgot because I knew I would want to actually from this angle it's easier to just pull forward but pull pull up to loosen the hood pull forward open the hood and then these side mirrors actually rotate down and into the engine section and then that closes back up because that just cleans up the uh, the robot silhouette a little bit and that will do it that is masterpiece reboost all transformed and that is a really interesting and cool transformation it does some really interesting stuff as i said i really like the way that those feet work but i'm also a big fan of what they did with the torso i really really like how those flaps come up and like fill in the midriff fill in the torso section underneath where the wheels for the arms were and also work as support structures to keep the arms from folding back down into the body. 
I love when parks pull like multi-duty like that, where it's like aesthetic, but also structural. It's very cool. And yeah, there we have MP54 reboost, all robot moded, and I think this is really cool. And it's again, like, it's such a compact car, but it opens up into a not too compact robot. I mean, it's not huge. It's not like, uh, I wouldn't put this on par with, say, Ocular Max Azalea, because that transformation is wild. Yeah. <sighs> Sorry, needed some water, getting a little thirsty. But this does some wild, wild stuff. I really, really like it. Um, the only thing that really kind of bums me out a little bit about this robot mode is the arms are kind of scrawny. I get why. I don't really know how they could have done thicker arms and have everything compact up into the body like they do. But they do look a little skinny compared to everything else. I mean, on the one hand, I think that's fine because I don't know about the rest of you, but my arms are not thicker than my thighs, <laughs> so I think that's normal, but it still just makes his arms look a little bit skinny. And his shoulders, I suppose, do stick out a lot, but that doesn't really bother me. Um, but one of the things that, well, one of the many things I like about this guy versus skids is uh, like the colors here. I just like the colors better. I think the red and black with some silver works better and like the darker blues as a couple of handful of accents with like the feet, hands, uh, crotch section and head works really nicely. I like the head sculpt better, which we'll see when we get to that. And another thing is, I know it's accurate. I did, like, it's something that bothered me about the Masterpiece Skids mold that I was like, oh, I don't want that, and then I saw Reboost and it made me change my mind, but there's a feature on this, or an, an aesthetic thing on this that I didn't really like, and then I saw a G1 cartoon still and realized it's actually accurate to the cartoon, so I can't knock it for, like, being unsightly, I just don't like it. It's these very obvious hinges right here at the shins. On Reboost, they're a lot harder to notice. They still stick out like that. You know, they stick out the same as they do on skids. But on skids, they stand out so much more because they're like a brighter blue on a darker blue. And I just did not like that look. And with Reboost, they're not gone, but they're a lot harder to notice with everything else going on. So there was that too. But yeah, I just really like this guy. I think aside from the wide shoulders and skinny arms, the proportions are really nice. The transformation is really interesting and cool and he cleans up incredibly nicely like there's this little bit on the back but i kind of feel like that's supposed to be there so i can't really complain that much <coughs> pardon me and i love that this just kind of plugs into the back and not flop there it's actually got something to peg into and it's pretty solid considering it's just like a few flaps that are folded up so i really like that and again, I love that foot transformation. That is really cool. And now this guy is covered in stickers. Definitely more for the robot mode than vehicle mode, but it's not like, you know, a, it's not the most stickers I've applied. But you've got some stickers going on on the insides of these details on the legs, on the knee, or just below the knee, like on the shin there. Uh, I don't remember if this is a sticker or not. I think that may have been painted, but it might also be a sticker. I honestly don't remember. But you also get these silver detailing on the thighs and on that side as well. Stickers for the pelvis section, stick for the midriff, and then the silver rings around the shoulders. So some pretty decent stickers on this guy. And then there are also stickers on the head, but we'll see that in a minute. But yeah, this is... This is cool. <laughs> I like this a lot. Now, for said head, uh, it is... I just, I like this better than Skid's head. I'm not knocking anyone who likes Skid's, uh, Masterpiece Skid's head design, but I prefer the face-plated look that we got with, like, cross-cut and reboost. Obviously, this is... or not necessarily obviously, but this is basically cross-cut's head, but in blue and silver rather than in uh, red. 
but it's also got some extra stickers that came with the sticker set, like on the sides, on the face plate. The eyes are like a metallic gold, and this strip going along the top of the head and on the front crest there. I was originally going to leave the head alone, but after I put the rest of the stickers on this guy, I thought, oh, what the heck, let's go for it. I actually like it. I like that added bit of chrome. It just kind of works with the other chromey details in the thighs. Hi, Astrid. And I, I don't know, I just, I like how it looks. It kind of pushes him a little bit further outside of the masterpiece look and into more of like, uh, I guess what almost feels like, like, I don't know, it makes him feel like more of a toy than a collector's item, but in a good way. And I really like that. And I've got an Astrid on my lap now. Hey, honey. Mwah. Now, uh, I know it wasn't strictly speaking necessary to put that Autobot logo on the hood, but he has this tiny little Autobot logo right there that's like under his chin in robot mode, and I really didn't like that, so just put that there. And yeah, you've got like the dual Autobot logos, but I don't really care. Uh, but yeah, he looks good. And now I need to talk about articulation, and I've got a very attention-hungry cat in my lap. Hi, Aster. Do you want to say hi to everybody? Well, if she purred and rubbed her face against the microphone, that might count for something. Anyway, for the articulation, the head is on a ball joint, which doesn't really get you much waggle, but can look up and down a bit and left and right. And then, of course, you can also use the uh, transformation hinge to go further back if you really want. The arms, uh, well, the doors, the door wings can go back and forth. They can wiggle up and down a little bit, but it's not much for, like, actual posing. But they can get out of the way, so you can rotate the arms 360 degrees, and unfortunately, due to the transformation, the shoulder rotation for forward and backward is down here rather than towards the center mass. So when you go up like that, I guess I asked her. When you go up like that, it does change where the arm is located on the body. It looks a little awkward, but for, you know, anything that's, like, within that front to back range it looks fine and the arms can go out or up rather uh, a lot so technically speaking you don't need to rotate the arm up like this you could just do this and that <laughs> you do get a bicep swivel as you saw there is a single jointed elbow, but because of the sculpt and the way it's designed to transform, it bends in quite a bit. The wrist can move up and down, well, primarily up, can't really go down at an angle, so it's not good for straight posing, but uh, get that from the transformation. The wrists also swivel, and the hands open, or the fingers open, and it says the typical masterpiece thing where the uh, three fingers are pinned together and the index finger is separated. Boy, I'm having a hard time keeping things in focus, it looks like. There is that. You also get a waist rotation that can go all the way around. The, uh, the backpack does not hinder the waist rotation at all, which is great. Now, the hips are a little bit of a disappointment in that because of the way they're designed, they hinge forward at like this towards the front of the joint rather than the center so it allows them to go forward to a little bit past 90 but you can see like it hinges up here not in the center so because of that they can't really go back like this is neutral and then you can kind of go back slightly and that is a little disappointing but it's fine for my purposes they can go out about that far could be tighter but they can go out. Um, unfortunately, though, when you rotate the thigh, that can hinder the outward motion because of the way the joint is shaped. So it's uh, it's a little bit, a little bit hindered, which is not the best, but it's manageable. Um, and yes, you get a thigh swivel. You also get a 
slightly over 90 degree bend at the knee. And then the feet can, they can actually go forward and back, back a little bit, but forward a bit too. And you get ankle tilts. So, pretty poseable. I, uh, I think, you know, he's not the most dynamic masterpiece figure, but, you know, he, he can do everything I would want him to do. And we also get the accessories, like this little missile launcher thing, and the missile actually does come out. It doesn't fire, but it comes out. And this can plug into the outside of the forearm. You can see there's a slot and slot and slot and slot. So you just line those up and plug them in and give them a forearm mounted missile launcher thing. Then there's this gun that was folded up to fit in the car. This, the barrel folds out and straightens out and then the handle folds down. Which way does it fold down? Does it fold down this way? Yeah, it folds down this way. And then I'm gonna open the hand. And I mean fully, not just the three fingers. Come on. Come on. There we go. And then this will actually plug in here. That tab there. So slide the handle into the hand and plug it in, and then you can curl the fingers around the handle. Ow. I love you, Astrid, but ow. And that gives him a gun. And what I like to do with this thing is uh, it's supposed to peg in in uh, this bit here. There's like this little tab here that's supposed to peg in this way for the uh, storage. I like to peg it in facing the other way to give him like a triple barreled gun. It doesn't hold together super well, but it holds together enough. Like, it's not going to shake out, but if you bump it, it might fall out. <laughs> and there's a cattail. So yeah, there he is with the accessories, and like the chrome accessories look pretty good too. I know I don't need to use all of them, but I just like it. And uh, he's not skids, so I don't have to worry about what is or isn't accurate to skids in terms of weaponry. <laughs> So there we have that. There it is, reboost. And oh, this cat. Yes, hi, honey. Hi. She is so not having any of this right now. I need to pay attention to her and her alone. <laughs> but getting back to what I was saying, uh, MP54 is a masterpiece carbot, so he's masterpiece carbot size, which is. One thing that's really cool, considering how pretty compact that vehicle mode was. Like, that car was slightly bigger than Deluxe Burnout. And here he is in robot mode, standing pretty much shoulder to shoulder with Artfire. And, uh, Samus. But here's the other real comparison to show how it expanded. There he is with Burnout. And like, that is, that is a lot more robot than what you get with Burnout. <laughs> and I mean, yes, as I said, Reboost's car mode is bigger than Burnout's car mode, but not by much. And to get a robot this big out of a car that was only slightly bigger than Burnout is pretty impressive. And I also love how these are, uh, let me get these other three out of the way. I also really like how these are, they're not the same character, but like they're molds that were designed for the same character. Like they're both the Skids mold. We just got Masterpiece and uh, Mainline, Legacy, whatever. But like, I really like how they do a lot of the same things in terms of where the parts come from, but the engineering is still drastically different and they handle what they need to do very differently. And it's cool how it's like, they're both very effective in their own ways. I really like how it all kind of comes together and they both pull off what they need to pull off really nicely. I mean, of course, Burnout's uh, 
This cat, my goodness. I'd show you what she's doing, but uh, I'm not presentable at the moment. Um, but yeah, she is just so happy curled up in my lap. She is gripping into my arm, so I'm going to be using my right hand for the rest of this video. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I just like it's really cool, and I mean, of course, Burnout's going to be simpler because she's a deluxe. But I just think it's cool how these are like essentially the same base character mold and done very differently for different lines, different reasons. And I just think that's cool. Now getting back to what I was saying about Masterpiece Carbots, here is Reboost with Sideswipe. And you can see that Sideswipe is a teensy bit taller. Just a little bit. He is also wider. But I think that's really cool because like Sideswipe's vehicle mode looked so much bigger than Reboost's and yet here we are. And it's also kind of hard to say how I feel in terms of like how these two compare in their engineering because Sideswipe's transformation is really clever but like it's a bit on the simpler side but not in a bad way it's just like in a way that's a little bit more I don't want to say refined, because I feel like that gives the wrong impression, because I don't mean to say that I think Reboost's transformation is unrefined, but it's just a very kind of like, you know, <laughs> we've got to get from here to here, and this is what we're working with, and they made it work extremely well, whereas Reboost, it does the same thing, so it kind of feels like, like, I think, I've seen other people mention this before, I don't remember who, it may have been Dr. Lockdown, it may have been Pia. I just know that other people have pointed out that Reboost feels more in line with older Masterpiece stuff than newer stuff. Like, Reboost feels way more like a classic Masterpiece Carbot in terms of engineering than he does MP36. And I am here for that. I don't hate MP36 or anything like that. I just feel like, you know, the more straightforward and effective, but still clever and fun transformations for Masterpiece figures is going to win out over being too complicated. Not that I think MP36 is too complicated, but uh, MP44... Yeah. Yeah, I... From what I've seen of videos of MP44, I don't even want a KO of that thing. It's just, no thank you. <laughs> but anyway... As, a, as always, here is the most important of the comparisons, and that is Reboost with the Duck Tank. And that is going to do it for MP54 Masterpiece Reboost. I cannot adjust the height of the camera because I need two hands to do that, and one hand is currently pinned under a cat. She is so happy, though. So we're just going to look at them like this, and as I said, I really like the mold. I... I do kind of, to a degree, think it would have been nice if I'd held out to get crosscut, because I think crosscut with repro labels would appeal to me more. But I do not regret Reboost in any way. I really like this figure, and I think the red and the uh, black and silver and blue, like it all just comes together really nicely. The stickers set it off really well, and he looks really good on the shelf. I think. I don't know, I feel like Reboost has a little bit more of a colorful shelf presence than Crosscut would have had, but it's neither here nor there. And I'm not double dipping on the mold. Unlike Studio Series Grimlock, I'm not double dipping on the mold, and I'm not replacing Reboost, so I'm good with this. But yeah, I, I really like this figure, despite its handful of minor things. Uh, but really, the only... The only major real thing that bothers me about this figure is opening that hatch in the back. I really wish they had handled that some other way because it is such a pain to do in car mode. At least when it's closed all the way. But that's enough about what I think of MP54 Reboost. What do you all think of this guy? Whatever your thoughts, feel free to chime in down below. I always enjoy hearing from you all. Thank you everybody for watching and uh... You want to say goodbye, Astrid? You want to tell everyone goodbye? No? Okay.
Astrid says goodbye.